seemed like uh, the game of Philly today. There was a little bit of an edge to it. Do you like that in a preseason environment at this stage? Yeah, it's it can be good and bad. You know, if you want the intensity as we're preparing for you know important games, um, start with the Champions Cup. So that part I like. But when it becomes too many guys talking, you know, um, not enough playing, then I think, you know, we're losing the plot a little bit. So that's something we can control on on both ends with with the messaging. So I like the intensity, but you know, we need to be more in control of our emotions so that we can just focus on playing. Yeah. I mean, to that end, I'm sure, I mean, you guys, you have objectives that you need to, you know, check off during these games, but do you think the atmosphere out there on the field says something about how far the rivalry has come between these two teams? Yeah, I think you come to expect that type of game. Uh, maybe it went a little bit too far just with the talking and the, and all the nonsense, but uh, it's. I think it's two good teams that compete in a pretty good way, and, and there's a history. And we've we've also played meaningful games in the last two years, so that matters and adds to it a little bit. But um, we can go about it in a way where where there's intensity and less of of all the things off the ball and you know with stoppages. two kind of realities while also being trying to take pieces away well we certainly addressed the the start because it was bad it was us not getting into the game and, and competing um for about 15 minutes and i think the score line showed that um a couple of those goals were some individual mistakes but there was also enough um from those 15 minutes that wasn't good to to look at and and understand why you're in the position you're in. I, I like the response. There's to be able to you know concede three goals within I don't know what was it 20 minutes and um, with the group that went 75 find four goals against a team that you know defends against the ball uh, very well. That part I I liked how we found our way into the game and finished off some plays and and created chances. And then it got better defensively as well because of the intensity of, of how we went to the ball and um, how we caused some problems. And then with the on the ball decision making to be able to you know, keep the ball in their half of the field uh, more than we did in those first 15 minutes. So plenty to take from it. Um, the biggest you know, thing we'll address is just how we started the game. You know, some good, some bad. Um, I think through three games, and because we've, you know, a, a majority of us have been been together for for those three years, there's a better understanding. But now it's how you integrate new pieces, how you look at guys in different spots. You know, we have Yuya out on the flank today in a, in a new position, so you evaluate what that looks like in a game setting. Um, so it, the game is always going to give you, you know the answers into what you're doing well and what you need to improve on. But aside from the 15 minutes to start the game, you know, I think there was certainly things that were, were showing progress from, from our first two uh, preseason games. We'll go to Laurel now in the Zoom. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you, yeah. Um, how important was it for you guys to, to get a player like that back? Just he's so versatile. He's, you know, he's played a lot of different positions for you guys. And I guess just if you could touch a little bit more on him playing that uh, on the flank, are you, are you seeing that as a, a viable option for him? I think so. Um, he's a, a smart player. He, you can throw him into different positions and he can figure it out. And he's technically a strong player. So, you know, whether he's playing facing goal with his back to goal on the touchline, you know, he knows how to receive the ball to, you know, to get out of pressure, to connect passes. You know, I, I would say it wasn't as strong as performance uh, with what we're accustomed to seeing, but maybe that had to do with 
um, just the new role. And so we'll continue to work with him um, moving forward if, if that's a position that we think uh, he can help us with. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, we've seen him up top. We've seen him uh, underneath our front two and, and obviously more so in the, you know, uh, the central midfield role deeper and underneath Lucho. So um, I like the, the versatility, uh, the versatility in the player. And um, I like the willingness that he has to, to help us in different areas um, because he's open to all these things and, and he's open to, um, to getting better. So that's a good starting point. And then uh, with Pavel, I hope I'm saying his name right. Um, with him, uh, you know, his, his signing being announced this week and obviously in the group. Uh, what are you seeing from him and what, what are kind of your expectations for him? After a week, they're pretty high. I would say good, good players can, can be thrown into uh, most environments and stick out in a good way. And he certainly um, has been very strong since, since he arrived um, today, I would say, Along with the group, that was probably the, the most we've seen him struggle in, in the first 15. But because he's mentally strong and um, has played at a, a high level, he he didn't crumble. He, he got into the game and <clears throat> had a really good uh, 60 minutes to end it. So had a, had a couple moments where, you know, how he moves with the play, how he joins the attack to create chances. I thought uh, he found himself in some good spots where, you know, with a little better uh, quality, he's – He's finishing a, a goal or two, so um, we've been very pleased with him, and you, you could tell he's uh, he's he's got a good feel for the game. Uh, technically, he's clean, and he he understands where pressure's coming from. That allows that allows our you know our center backs specifically to find you know central passes where he can get out of um, you know pressure situations and and get us moving to goal. So uh, it's been a strong start for him. Go to the zoom now, and uh, Alejandro from Nacion FCC. Hey, coach, uh, will you be able to give us uh, any update on Alvaro Boreal? Yeah, he's meant to uh, arrive this evening uh, in Clearwater. And the second one is uh, any update on Sergio? And, uh, he looks like he got injured yeah. in the game. Not yet. He had taken a a knock on his knee. Um, on on his attempt at goal, and I haven't seen the the playback. And then he tried to keep going and had a, a moment uh, where he just passed the ball. There was it was non contact, and he didn't seem to be overly concerned when he came off the field. But you know maybe he felt there was you know risk um, carrying on. So we'll we'll see how he comes out of it, and uh, you know the next day or two. Back to, uh, to Pat Burney. Going back to Alvaro Pat, um, Chris was. Quoted in a story that came out yesterday, just talking about how you know, there are other parts of the world outside of Europe where Alvaro could conceivably go. Um, obviously, you know, as the manager, is your plan kind of to start to get Alvaro going, or maybe hold him back a little bit in the eventuality that something something yeah. comes up? He's he's our player, and uh, he's been a very important part of our team. So the idea is to see how he comes in and um, and integrate him back into the group. And um, whatever the conversations are uh, about the, the future, we're going to coach him to help us uh, in the short term. And, um, you know, that'll be the, the approach. All right. Thank you very much, Pat. Thank you.